Hello everybody, welcome back to Valley of the Myths Block of the Month. I'm Adrienne Ritter. And I'm Shelley McNeely. And we are doing our June block for this year, so block number six. And um, this block is a block that Shelley kind of invented. She's, I think she said she saw something it looks similar. similar and thought, we can create this. So um, the first thing I want to say is I really encourage you to go to the Valley of the Mist website and down and uh, get a copy of the written instructions that are there. Um, and I'm trying to not make this too confusing, but basically the instructions on the website this month are, I mean, normally we tell you to make two blocks, one to keep and one to enter into the drawing. And most people, I think, do that. Um, so because this has kind of an interesting part to the block where you have to make this triangle cut, um, the, the instructions on the website tell you how to make one block. Right. But we're going to demonstrate here an easy way to do two blocks. So if you only want to do one block, follow more closely um, on fabric requirement, pieces size, on how to do that from those instructions. Um, you will have a little bit of waste um, at the ends of, of these um, column pieces. Right. Um, and Parts of it are essentially the same. But, right, uh, yeah. the majority of it's the same. It, it really only has to do with making this subsection. Right. And we are gonna make two of those today. Um, two subsections. We're not going to make two complete whole blocks, but you'll have two parts so you can make two blocks. Right. And if you don't want to do it that way, then look at the instructions on the website. I guess that's, that's the easiest way to explain right, it. Right, right. And because, the other thing, because we, we like to allow you to have choice in um, where you, in some places where you right. use your, your fabric, there is going to be a little bit of variation on what you need. So these, right. these sizing that Shelly's going to tell you about now are kind of approximate. Right. So what we're going to need, and, and oh, before she can continue further, right. we're, we're going to make this in two parts. We're right. going to make this section first, and then we're going to make this section. But she's going to tell you all the fabric stuff right now. Right. So for the first section, what do they need? Okay, I'm going to leave this up here. Hopefully it won't confuse you. We need I can take mine down, and then you can <clears> show over there. We're going to need a piece of white fabric. That's going to be for this. That is six and three quarters by 10 inches. And then we're going to need two strips, one coordinating and one black. Of um, one, Make one three and a half inches wide and the other one three and three quarters inches wide. You can choose which one, it right. doesn't matter. And make them both 10 inches long. And that's okay. what we're going to use to make two of this section. Okay, and the reason why we made it a little wide is because while we want you to make a cut at, at pretty close to 45 degree angle, if you're off, if you have this little bit of extra length and width, then it, it won't, your block will still be fine at the end. Right. So that's because the angle, so it, it takes up from both directions. Right. Okay. Then that, but that only makes your, this piece only about nine and a half inches long, something like that. Right. So we're going to have to add another piece at the bottom. That, that'll be six and three quarter inches wide. And then you need to make that as wide as you need to make this whole length 13 inches when it's all sewn together. So, so you're going to measure your piece at the end. And you're going to um, add a half an inch for the seam allowance. And then whatever, subtract that total number from 13. And that's how big you need that piece. Right. Now, I, I do want to point out here that um, I did mine with this make two at a time method and mm -hmm. Shelly did it with the method on the website and so you can see our pieces at the bottom are different. Right. That's kind of, yeah. if you do the way that it's for, to do one at a time, your your piece here can vary a lot more. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess that would be the it best It can, way. yeah. Because it, it doesn't can, matter. No. It, it can be whatever size it needs to be. Because as you, and, and as you look at our blocks, like my angle goes a different direction than Shelly's. Um, my fabrics are in different order. That's fine. Right. Um, you know, it, it's supposed to be kind of how you want to do it. Right. So if you're making two, you're going to need two of these strips for the bottom. Okay. okay. Just to let you know. Now the, so other, the other half. The other half, you're going to take each of your four 
fabrics, which I guess we didn't really describe this time. Our focus fabric this, this time is the, um, the, Bla the Washington, Western Washington, Washington Shop, Shop Hot Fabric right. at, from 2018, which trust me, you will not be able to find right. it online. It's okay. very hard to find. Right. So um, if you are not a Guild member, then just pick a fa focus fabric and use it all year long right. to tie all your blocks together. And then we have white and the coordinating, the coordinates with the focus and the black. So, so each one of each of those, and we are defining the size of the focus to be two inches by six and three quarters because we're trying to use a minimal amount. And, and, I'll, and I'm going to interject right here that people have asked me if you in the guild and you bought your half yard of fabric, do you have enough fabric? I took a piece of graph paper and I have graphed out the whole year. If you are very careful with your cuts and use the minimal amount that we ask you to use each month, there is enough to make two of each block. So don't use extra focus fabric. <laughs> if it's an optional fabric to use and you only have that half yard, don't use any extra. Right. Okay. And then each of these fabrics are six and three quarter inches each of these three, six three quarter inches wide, and then different lengths, so that when you lay these three fabrics next to each other. You want to do it here? Or sure. Okay. So those were those. So we have my coordinating piece, a black piece, and a white piece. They should end up being so twelve. When you when you, when you um, lay them out here right. um, before you sew them. Yeah. Just next to this each other. Includes, this includes, um, doesn't it, I mean, yeah, don't worry about seam allowances because right. we're kind of taking that question out of there. So how much, how much long should, how long should it be? should be 12 and a half inches. This is probably a little long. But oh, okay. I'm like, this is yeah. going long. It's a little long. Okay. But it's, right. It, well, you know, you're not that much long. Yeah. You're, actually, you look a little short, but, okay. Yeah. 12 and a half inches. Yeah. And then you're, then you're going to have your focus okay. fabric in On here. On top of that. Okay. So that when all these are sewn together. It should be 13 inches long, just like the other side is 13 inches long. And so obviously to make two blocks, you're going to need two sets of these fabrics. Right. But we're only making one block right now. It's just that one section you will be able to make two. Right. Okay, so now the first thing that we have to do is very simple, and we're going to just go um, sew these two together. Long sides together. Excuse so me. it's your, um, these so are 10 inches long. So one of them together. is three and a half, one is three and three quarters, right. and you're going to sew that long seam together, press it to the darkest, press, right. it doesn't really matter which way you press yeah. it, unless your focus, your coordinating fabric is very light. Right. Um, so, and then we're going to come back and we are going to show you the next magical step <laughs> to give you two. two. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Okay. So we're back and we have... Um, the two pieces sewn together. Um, I'll I'll lay them down like this. I'm actually um, gonna demo this with Shelley's precious pieces of fabric. This is this is her uh, method of doing it. So so that's why I'm the demoer. So Shelley, when she was creating this pattern, and she had this weird, as you'll see if you look at those instructions for doing one, <laughs> this method of. You know, you sew them, you, you stagger the pieces, and you sew them together, and you lop off the extra corners. And I'm like, well, I have to make two blocks. I can do this and just end up with two blocks. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm not demoing mine, because I already have my other half made from when I made this block. So, although I must admit, um, I did it wrong the first time. But that's why you watch this video. You don't have to waste fabric like we do. So... As you can see in my in my block, my angle is opposite of Shelley's. Right. And if you're doing them one at a time, that depends on how you stagger your fabric. Um, when um, when you're doing it my method, what you do is we've cut these long pieces, ten inches long, and now we have stacked the two fabrics the same direction. And they're either both right side up or both wrong side up. It doesn't matter. The only difference it's going to make is that if you stack them right side up, like that's what I did, you end up with a cut and your, your cut is in this direction. Right. Now, when I assembled my final block, I like she has, she has um, it, um, 
you know, angled like this and the and the side in like that. I could have turned it around. We don't care. We're going to let you right. do that whichever you want. I just didn't turn mine around because then I would have had black right against black. So it was a color choice. But um, so, so if you want the angle to go this direction, then you stack them right sides up. If you want it to go in the other way, you're going to stack them right sides down. So now I just... And, and to do this, I, I don't know if you guys are used to using the 45 degree angle on your ruler. If you are, then fine. I don't need to show you what to do. You can fast forward. But for those of you who've never actually, you look at those angles and you go, what could I do with those? I'm going to show you how to use them. So <laughs> um, I have this piece of blue painter's tape on here just so you can very clearly see this um, 45 degree line. And it's 45 degrees to to this edge, okay, or to this edge, but I'm gonna use this edge. And I have to have it wider because I need to be able to move the, um, where my cutting edge is gonna be. Right. So, so what you do is basically you take this line and you line it up with the end of your fabric. And then this is now a 45 degree angle because I have this, I've, I've just taken the line that they put on the ruler and I put a piece of painter's tape on it and I line that up with my end, and then I figure out, and, and here's, you can, these don't have to be the same. They don't have to right. be, ex, uh, you know, a certain length, because the way you're gonna do it, you're gonna end up with the, with the same length fab, the same length final piece, w w however you do it. But I said, let's rough, rough, roughly do them in the middle, okay? So say like here, this is roughly in the middle, I lay that against there and I'm going to make that cut. So I'm actually going to do that while you're watching right now. I'm going to lay them on here. I line this up with the end of the fabric. Shelly's over there cringing. These are my <laughs> babies. Don't mess it up. Let me move that over a tiny bit. Okay, um, this Shelly, I think I'm roughly in the middle. Am I? Oh, pretty close. Are you happy with that? Sure. I trust finishing? you. Okay. <laughs> we kind of pre-looked at this and figured out roughly where the center would be. Okay, okay. So I've got this. What matters is that you kind of have this on that line pretty accurately and that you can get to both corners and then make that cut. Let's see if I actually cut. Of course I missed part of it. Again. Oh, you're going to kill me, Shelly? There. <laughs> There's a couple of extra cuts on there. Okay. Okay, so now we have two sets of, of, of fabric. And here is the magic. You're going to take one of the two and switch it. Now these are the two sets that get sewn together. Now these are um, wrong sides up, so you're going to take and you're gonna, these two are gonna go together, and these two are gonna go together. And now, if you have ever done bias binding, um, you should know the way to um, line these up. Let's see if I can do it under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about this, let me not do it upside down. You have them like this, and you have it like, I have a long one. Oh my gosh, Shelly, I'm totally, Goofing up here. Nope. I need them to go like this. And I take and I offset them just by a quarter inch. And so so I have I have basically I've turned one one the opposite direction. So they're does that make sense? They're kind yeah. of going in a corner. I think if okay. you turn them so you have right sides together, it kind of comes obvious. Right how they need to And when go. you go to stick this under your needle, if you have your quarter inch, and this is a quarter inch down, then the needle will fit right in that V if you have it lined up right. Okay, so you're gonna have a quarter, you're gonna have it equally set offset at either end, and it should give you a quarter inch over from the seam. And you're gonna make that, you're gonna sew that, and so then when it folds out, you will have Voila, a block. I mean, it, it looks funny now because I don't have it set up. Right. But you're gonna make that flip and sew. So basically, um, when we had them, 
wrong sides up, it was like this, okay? And then we're gonna turn it right side up, and this one will be, did I turn that right side up? Yep. I think I did. Yep. And then you're gonna, see I have, a, I have a square edge here, and I have a square edge here, they're at opposite ends, and I make that little V here, and I'm gonna sew right down there. Right. You and do that with both. That's how you do with both pieces, and you are going to end up with, with a piece that ha that looks like this, that has the the three fabrics together. Right. So we're going to go away, and we're going to do that, and we'll be right back. Okay. So we're back from sewing that diagonal piece. Right. Did it? Did it all work out okay? Even with my funky yes. cutting. Okay. This is so as you can see again here. She she um put the two pieces together. And um, the the longer square piece, or like at opposite ends, you know, has that right there. So it's a quarter inch in at the right. seam. She started sewing. And what size did your piece end up, Shelly? It ended up being nine and a quarter. Okay. And we so. remeasured it, and um, we don't know why. Yeah. I mean, hers was nine and a quarter. Mine came out to nine and a half. But that's okay. That's why we had you wait to do that final piece to cut. Right. So Shelly's got to have a piece that's four and a quarter so that when I sew it together I end up with 13 inches. And I'm gonna and I have a piece that's um, uh, four inches. So I on my first block I did it with black at the bottom so I thought I'd do something different this time and I'm gonna do it with white. Shelly's doing hers with white because right. I just like it. That's what she likes. I also wanted to show you that when you end up with both of these pieces you're gonna end up with Oh yeah. The di uh, di whoop, do I have, have that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. The same. So that there, one has a, you know, the bl uh, the black big and the black small, coordinating big, coordinating small. So it's it, it's going to be opposites. Wait, wait. Let me let together. me clarify that. Okay. Okay. So she her black piece is wider than her red piece. Yes. So it's always wide. Well, that's true. I'm sorry. The length. I'm sorry. The length. Okay. <laughs> but but because we did that in one step, they do kind of flip sides. Yeah, they flip sides. So. Um, okay, so now the next step is we're going to sew together these two pieces to make that, um, that first piece. And um, so we're going to do that. And then, you know what, I think you guys can handle that without us coming back. So the next step after that is you were going to take, let's move these things off here, shall we? Okay. And I didn't even warn you, we were going to jump ahead and do two steps at once. We're going to sew <laughs> these two together, press them how you want. I know Shelly is going to press to her white because it's, it's more complicated to press to this side. But I press to this side just because I don't like that shadow underneath my white. Okay, so then you're going to take your four pieces that you have left. Right. And you are going to arrange them in an order that you find pleasing. It doesn't matter. We are not telling you what order they should be in. Yeah. Um, I um, haven't even thought about it yet. Yeah, I really haven't either. Um, I'm going to think about it better this time so I don't end up with um, the same color at either end. So I'm not going to put my white on an end because this time I have white to finish that block until so my white's going to be somewhere in the middle. So I have more choices. But it really doesn't matter. I mean, your focus fabric doesn't have to be in the middle. You you, you end up seeing the same amount of that focus fabric regardless. Right. right. Um, and one thing we didn't mention, and actually, if you, um, I, I have a very bad example of this, uh, is that I was using, I picked a layer cake, a, a piece of a layer cake fabric. That's what this yellow is. And I'm able to make two blocks from that one layer, mm -hmm. layer cake. And we always tell you kind of pick your coordinating fabric after you've cut your piece of focus fabric because this focus fabric, the colors vary quite a bit through the length of it. So um, I actually have almost no yellow in my piece of focus <laughs> fabric. But you know what? It's still going to look fine. It is. Because it, it, this is a yellowish red. There's red in it. There's orange in it. It's going to be fine. And besides that, when you make your quilt, you'll have, you'll have all, all those ones. colors yeah, in there. So they'll be with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. So uh, we will be back when we have, we will be, you're going to 
sew that bottom piece on this side. You're going to sew these four pieces together, press them how you want. It doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, just I would say press to the darker fabric each time. And so when you're going to come back, you're going to have two halves. Okay. And we will be back in <laughs> just a minute. Okay, so we're back. We have done our complicated steps here. <laughs> We've added our piece to the bottom to make this a total of 13 inches long. Right. We've sewn these four pieces together to make it 13, 13. inches. Mine actually came out about 12 and 3 quarters, but that's okay. I must yeah. have fat seamed it somewhere. Yeah. So, but it doesn't matter, it's extra. So now the hardest part for you right now will be to decide which way you think it looks best. Yes. And it's for this, you get to decide which way you want the angle to go, this way or this way, and which way you want these fabrics to flow. Right. So um, you're just gonna lay that out, look at it and figure it out. Right. Um, one thing I did notice, which I, I I think because it's got such a bigger piece of white at the bottom than, and Shelly says it now, when you have the white at the top and the bottom like this, your triangle kind of, um, like, looks like it's in the middle of the block. I mean, it looks completely different than, say, like this one where I have the black. Right. But that's okay. You know, right. all these blocks are fine. However you, you wanted to do it, that's, that's your choice, mm -hmm. and they're going to go together, and they're going to look wonderful. Right. Yeah. Or at least we say they look like <laughs> Okay, so we want you to um, sew this final center seam, um, press it whichever way you want. Yes. And <laughs> because neither side is really less complicated. Right, right. And um, yeah. So, all right, we'll be back with our blocks. We won't have them squared up, or maybe we'll have one squared up and one not. Okay. And we'll show you how our blocks look at the end. All right, all right. we'll be back in a minute. Hey, okay, we're back. So. Shelly has squared up her block, right. and we just got done chuckling because when she set it above her other block, she realized she I had pretty know. much done it the same. I know, it's crazy. And how come, Shelly? I don't know. I just lined, when I put them, when, when I you, had, um When you took this piece and you laid it flipped against it. it. and I, I just liked the way that way looked better. And, and she wasn't even looking at her I old had block. No idea. It was over here. She couldn't see it. Yep. Yep. So, so um, my block has not been squared up, and um, so the only tricky thing with the squaring up of this is we would we would like it if you know you can move it back and forth how you want and up and down to take advantage of those, but try to keep this center seam roughly parallel to the edges. Okay, so. So it's not necessarily going to be in the middle of your block because you have some play to go side to side, but try to keep it so that um, they're kind of parallel. We don't really want them turned wonky. If you cut it accidentally that way, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But just don't try to make it super wonky because right. um, every once in a while we do want maybe a, yeah. a straightish kind of block. But don't re-sew it just because it didn't come out that right. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we were actually talking about um, Shelly before I edit this video. <laughs> Don't sew your last corner together because you could be making two more blocks again. <laughs> so, okay, anyway, so that is our block for June. Um, we kept it kind of simple. I am so excited. We, um, even though the retreat was canceled for the guild and we right. normally get our blocks ready. So um, the three sisters here, we, we had our own mini retreat here at the house, right. and um, we have figured out all the blocks for the year. I'm right. excited. I have. I'm looking at some of them, and you can't see them, and they are pretty, <laughs> pretty cool blocks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're excited to finish out the rest of the year, um, and um, that's about all we got. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep making the rest of these blocks, right. and uh, we will see you in a month. And right. Uh, and remember, these blocks, because of our June um, meeting for the Guild, is not a normal meeting if we have it. I'm right. hoping we have our June meeting. Right. The May meeting is right now is not going to happen, so May blocks will be due in September. Yep. But um, 
hopefully this June, uh, the June meeting happens and everything over the summer we are able to have it. But um, these will be the ones for the drawing. You don't have to have ready until September. September. Yeah. But please don't put them off because then you'll be in a rush. I know, and you should have time to sew now, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, I swear, all we do is yard work and sewing. Right. <laughs> and yeah. So, all right. Enjoy yourself, and we will see you in a month.